not just the one question. There are two parts to this noble question. Um, that first part is this very long-winded question. Um, they're asking clients to somehow imagine themselves without this canvas, without this problem, their life without the problem. Um, so I'm going to show you how I ask these kind of questions. And of course, the other part about the art, art part, is knowing when is the good time to ask the miracle question. Um, it has a lot to do with the timing. As you know, every tool, any, any tool, you have to know the time to use the right tool. Perhaps we should have some discussion about that, but uh, about how do you know this is the right time? Many people ask me that question. I'm sure you are asked that question too. How do you know this is the time to ask her the question? Do you have good ideas for that? Um, there is uh, many discussions about that. My take on that, and I may, I may be wrong about this, and there are other people are the other experts here, different ideas, I'm sure. But my understanding, uh, my observation is, how do you know it's time to ask the verbal question? It usually means clients have start to imagine. So we're talking a lot about the ability to imagine things, imagination. It's they start to imagine the possibility that solution can be there. They don't know exactly what it is yet, but they have some idea that if I just face this direction, that somehow mm, there is likely to be some solutions. And that's the kinds of conversation you have with the client. And so that's the time when you decide. And again, two parts. First part is the asking questions. The second part is how to follow up on the questions. Okay, so I did talk about the first part of a verbal question. And uh, so I, uh, I bought, um, imagine you have a, I imagine it's very hard to imagine even if you haven't, uh, just like me, I never gamble. Never gamble in my whole life, so I don't know what it's like. But suppose you somehow you would talk to me about it. Um, I would say things like, um, well, we have quite a bit of our clients oftentimes come in and they start talking to you a lot about the damage that's been done. What kind of damage my gambling has caused? What kind of problem it has caused? How much I have hurt other people? How much I hurt myself? These are kinds of a problem talk initially. And then we slowly and listen very carefully for the words they use. Because as you know, it's always, always picking up and using clients' own words rather than replacing that was my word. So how does this client talk about it? Because that gives me some idea about how to engage with them around those kinds because so same, even though there are same words that implies the same, meaning the same things, the way the client uses is very different oftentimes than now what I might use. So I will start out with now I'm going to ask you a rather strange question. Long pause. Pauses, by the way, is a fair, as important as questions you ask. So the space, <coughs> emptiness, a um, very important part of the question. I'm going to start again. I'm going to ask you a rather strange question. requires lots of imagination on your part. Do you have a good imagination? He says yes. <laughs> Many clients will say yes. Or 
right? If they don't think they have a good imaginary, they will say, I'll try. So you are already engaging them into, at least to give it a try. So that's why the pause is important. It pauses when half the client is starting to imagine. And then they will say, I will, I will try. Good. That's good. Walk pause. Strange question is this. See clients, okay, okay, I'm ready, I'm ready. And then I would say, suppose, even so, still say, suppose. By the way, suppose is such a wonderful word. Okay? Because it helps them to move into the land of imagination. That's what suppose is. And say, suppose. After you do the talk, you go home. Yes. So far, you haven't said anything strange yet. <laughs> <laughs> so they're waiting for the next, what is this strange question? You go home, and you still have lots of work to do for the rest of the day. Say things like, 
I will feel like I wake up feeling like my lower, my shoulder is lighter. Okay. What else? What else is you know what else? Very important question. Um, well, I will want to get up and face the day when I've been dreading the day. Okay. Alright. So then what would the first small thing you will do? Small, always small solutions. First small thing you will do that you didn't do this morning. Almost all clients have some ideas about that. 